Hi everyone, welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia, your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Welcome if you're a new viewer, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. This is my end of the month episode. So, <laughs> it is October 31st. Happy Halloween. I am not dressed up in any way. In fact, I did not put together a costume at all for today. Yeah, totally lame, but whatever. I'll explain. I've been kind of busy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yes, this is the episode where I take you through the things that I have crafted this month and I announce a giveaway. So stay tuned for all of the wonderful things in this episode. Um, let's see. To start, I'm going to take you through things that I've finished then look at things I have in progress, and then we'll finish up with the giveaway. So the first thing I finished this month in the month of October was this t-shirt sweater, and I'm already standing up so that I can show you what it looks like. Yeah. So this is called the Daybreak Tea. Uh, I knit this out of 100% acrylic yarn. It is Lion Brand Mandala, which is a sport weight. I used two skeins and I alternated colors throughout. So it gets this striping effect. And I am wearing a t-shirt underneath it. So I didn't quite get the length I wanted. Like I have to tug it to get it to sit where I want it to. <clears throat> I wanted it to hit me where my t-shirts hit me. Um, it's also a little more snug than I thought. I thought I had built in some more ease, but whatever. It does fit. It is designed to be short sleeve. It is a t-shirt pattern. Um, <clears throat> And one of the things I did differently than the pattern is I knit this, um, so it's written to be knit bottom up, which is what I did. I followed the pattern to here, and then what you're supposed to do is knit the front and the back separately, and then three needle bind off. So instead, what I did is I continued in the round, but I built in steaks. And then I did the three needle bind off. So uh, let me give you a close up of this steak. So yeah, it is acrylic yarn. So it is in no way like gra going to grab onto itself. Um, it's all man-made fibers. It doesn't felt very well, um, if at all. <laughs> So I did run this under the sewing machine, um, but that's all I did. What I would do differently is uh, I would give myself more than just three stitches. So I only put three extra stitches in here for the steak. I think really five, but like three of them for the cutting and stuff. So I, I would add more than that because this fold over edge is so insanely short. You can see these uh, edges here where I cut are still really close to the edge of the garment and so they stick out a little bit. Which just makes it look messy, right? Not clean and polished. So yeah, there's another one. Well, it just doesn't look finished. It looks like I still got ends going on, um, but I loved the steaking process itself. I just think I would execute it better on the next project knowing that I really didn't leave myself enough to fold under. Does that make sense? But I liked the process. Um, one thing I don't, so another thing I did modify about this pattern is it's written to have lace detail here, but because I was striping the yarns, I thought the lace would get lost in it, and I just decided to keep it solid. Plus, some of the folks who knit this pattern said 
they felt really open and exposed with the lace on their chest and I teach for a living <laughs> and those comments kind of scared me from doing the lace so I just took it out knowing um if I'm solidly covered, I can wear this to work. But if I have a bunch of lace on the chest, um, I might have similar feelings to folks who wrote those comments. So I took it out. Um, I can always knit it again with the lace. Uh, but one thing I don't, I'm not a huge fan of is this neckline. Um, I think that's one thing I would do differently. And of course it's behaving differently than the pattern because I'm using acrylic instead of wool um, or cotton. Um, but I am just not a fan of these rolled edge necklines. It just doesn't, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it feels on my neck. Um, I would just much rather do uh, like a little v-neck or something like my t-shirt has. So. Uh, because the front and back were knit the same, uh, because I took the lace out, there is no difference between the front and the back. There's no short row shaping or anything. They're exactly the same. Um, but all in all, I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, I like the colors, how they turned out with striping the two skeins together. Um, I think I would have knit it just a little bit longer. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and of course I would have left a few more stitches for the steek just so that sleeve edge would be a little more clean, but all in all, I do like the, the pattern. I would knit it again. So yeah, I almost finished this sweater in the month of September <laughs> and it was almost a finished object last month. So I did finish it up pretty quickly. Uh, in the month of October, in the first three days, I think I finished it, <laughs> which was really nice. Um, but yeah, like I said, there are a few things I would do differently, but all in all, I think it turned out great for, um, for an acrylic yarn that is going to behave differently than a natural fiber. It was my first time steaking anything ever. Um, it hasn't fallen apart. It's just those, if I had given myself a, a longer edge to fold over, I wouldn't be seeing those ends poking out. So that's all. I'll just have to trim them as they poke out, which is going to happen. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm happy with it. And I have another t-shirt sweater. Uh, in my wardrobe, which is really nice. Uh, other than a sweater, I have finished a few things, um, and some of them involve hand-spun yarn, which I think is really great. So I think I'll start with, um, let's see, this was a work in progress last month. I think this project was also a work in progress last month. Um, so I did finish this yesterday. <laughs> so I go from like the first thing I finished to the last thing I finished. I know. Um, but this was a work in progress last month and it's honestly just kind of been sitting in the bag, hanging out, and I knew I wanted to finish it this month, get it off my needles because this is going to be a Christmas present. Um, so I did. I finished it last night while we were watching television. Um, it is called the Crisscross Headband. It is one of my patterns and it's available for free on Ravelry with a tutorial video. Um, so yeah, it's just a really simple garter stitch headband. It's really great for using up scraps, um, leftover fingering weight yarn from sock projects, or if you're doing um, blankets with minis or something. Um, but yeah, it's got this crisscross detail in it. My hair is doing funny things over my glasses. Look at this strand. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like to put the crisscross off to the side. Um, 
but uh, yeah, and it's reversible, which is super fun. So um, crisscross here, and if I flip it, crisscross the same over there. So it's uh, just a really simple powder, and like I said, great to use up scraps. And that's what this yarn was. So uh, this is finished off the needles. This can go in the Christmas gift box. Um, to be gifted this year. Um, so yeah, I finished that headband. Yay! And I'll have links to all the patterns um, discussed in this episode down below in the description box so you can go directly to them. So that's finished. Um, another work in progress last time. Nothing. That was it. Um, something I did finish last month was, um, some hand spun yarn. So this was Sleeping Beauty. Um, it's got, what, merino and some silk and all kinds of things in the blend. So I had finished spinning up, this was four ounces. I spun it into two balls. And it came out more like a sport weight. I really wanted a fingering weight, but I got sport. Um, but I did knit a pair of socks out of it. So last month I showed you the yarn. This month I get to show you the socks. <laughs> yes. So let's see if I can get... Because the natural light is behind me, this is a little challenging. Hang on. Okay, that's better. Although you're probably going to catch a little bit of shine off of my glasses. Whatever. <laughs> What's more important is you see how lovely the colors are in this yarn. So uh, this is a pair of socks for myself. It's predominantly this beautiful turquoise blue, but it has those pops of yellow and some soft pink and brown, some darker hints of the blue. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so happy. So even though the yarn is more of a sport weight than a fingering weight, my spin was pretty consistent, which made knitting up these socks really easy. So I did knit them. Oh, here's the yarn. <laughs> because I spun it into two separate balls to start with. Um, and the reason I did that is actually because of my bobbin size. So I have an Ashford traditional wheel. Um, I bought it used at a flea market, <laughs> uh, but it has its original bobbins with it, which do not hold a full four ounces of yarn. So what I do is I spin up half, so two ounces on one bobbin, two ounces on the other, and it seems to work out well that way. Instead of having like, I don't know, 2.2 ounces on one and 1.8 on the other, whatever. I just split it down the middle and then it's just easier for me. So because I already had the yarn split up into two balls, I knit these socks two at a time. Also because it's sport weight and I've never actually knit sport weight socks before, yeah, um, it made it a little bit easier to uh, keep track of these socks being the same size um, and that kind of thing. I did cast on my usual 60 or 64 stitches. They were too big <laughs> and I did have to rip out and start over. Um, so these have less stitches. I don't know if I even wrote down the number of stitches. I think it was more like 40, uh, yeah, I think it was 48 stitches instead of 60. Uh, and I knit these on US size one needles. Uh, yeah, so I've got some two by two ribbing at the top. I knit them cuff, nope, I knit them toe up. 
which is not my usual method um, because the bind off edge at the top uh, you can see is a little bit frilly like it poofs out a bit instead of kind of being straight or cinched in uh, yeah I have trouble with binding off <laughs> the top of the socks and rib it, it just does that little bit of flaring out and doesn't seem as tight or have the opposite problem where it's so tight I can't even get my foot through it <sighs> It's something I struggle with, but because I wasn't confident in having enough yardage, I mean, look how much I've left over. I had nothing to worry about. There is so much here. Um, I wasn't confident I would have enough yardage, so I wanted to knit it toe up just so I could make sure if I at least have the foot covered, if they end up being shorty socks, it's okay, but I wouldn't necessarily know that going in. I didn't calculate my yardage before I cast on so yeah I just kind of rushed into this project and I could have saved myself some headaches had I taken my time to calculate those things but whatever um yeah so I did a little bit of ribbing detail here where um, I have the ribbing extend a little bit further down the middle of the sock and kind of come out in this little v-shape which is a bit difficult to see on this hand spun yarn but that's okay so i'm happy with them they do fit and i'm very excited to wear them i was sad to have to rip them out when the 60 stitch sock was way too big but uh, I knew it was worth it so <laughs> yes I have another pair of socks for myself out of some beautiful hand spun yarn and I've quite a bit left over to use in another project which is also pretty exciting I did finish another hand spun project <laughs> using some hand spun yarn that I spun up last month in September and this month I knit it into a project. <laughs> and that yarn is some of the Carry Hill fiber that I had purchased from a local lady, washed it, dyed it, um, blended it on my blending board, spun it up, and now I've knit it, right? <laughs> so this is what's left over. So I went with um, autumnal colors so orange and rust and brown and gray and a little bit of pop of like a nice golden yellow um, and so this skein I had done a two ply uh, with the fiber oh my gosh this Carrie Hill I need to make a sweater out of this or something it is so nice uh, but I had posted um, a photo on Instagram and asked for some input on what to make out of it and I went with pumpkin <laughs> so I did end up knitting another pumpkin this time out of hand spun so it's quite large um what would I say the diameter of this is let me measure this the diameter of this pumpkin is eight inches so it is eight inches across um, yeah I really had no plan for size just I knew I wanted it to um, be larger than the other pumpkins I have knitted I was a little bit worried about running out of yarn but clearly that did not happen I have plenty left over um, I did cast it on from the bottom here and it's Fun to see the colors like swirl out uh, you can see some of these nips of where um, from some of the second cuts in the fiber that stuck with it I just think it looks actually kind of nice on the pumpkin it gives it a little bit of character uh, I was going to do um, this thing with the pumpkin where I leave a hole at the top and then use a stick like an actual wooden stick from a tree as the stem of the pumpkin but I just didn't like the look 
of it, of the sticks that I had already with this fiber. It just, it just didn't sit well with me. So I decided to knit the stem instead. So uh, this pumpkin is stuffed with polyfill, um, polyester fiber. I did put some, I don't know if you can hear that. I did put some black beans in here just to give it a little bit of weight as it sits down. Uh, but yeah, it's just um, knits and pearls. So these are pearls and knit stitches. It just kind of played around with using ribbing to give it that uh, pumpkin texture. And I'm really happy with it. So <laughs> this is a new addition to the fall decor, uh, hand spun uh, pumpkin. Hand spun, hand knit pumpkin. And then I also finished another project yesterday. <laughs> I really wanted to finish things up that were so close to being finished. Just like this sweater last month, I really tried to get it done in time and I didn't. Um, this time I made a more concerted effort. Yeah. Um, so another project I finished this month with knitting is another gnome. <laughs> So this is a pattern by Imagined Landscapes, and this is the Adventure Gnome. Again, I'll have all patterns linked below in the description box. <laughs> um, but I participated in the Advent Knit Along last year, and this was the pattern for that. Um, so this is the last Adventure Gnome I am going to make this year. <laughs> kind of adventure gnomed out <laughs> uh, that this will be another Christmas gift for a family member. So we have um, this beautiful variegated yarn is from Lone Star Arts in the vintage photograph colorway. This is uh, leftover from some projects and I pretty much used it up to the end. So no more vintage photograph for me but uh, it is quite beautiful. Um, just some solid black um, Serenity Sock. Uh, Premier Yarns Serenity Sock in black. The green, I can't remember. Oh yeah, that was a nitpick stroll. It's um, this beautiful like green heathered. It's got hints of brown in it. Really pretty. Uh, and then this gray is left over from my... my um, sweater uh not find your fade that's the shawl so faded for my so faded sweater <laughs> uh yeah so and i of course love the boots i think they are the cutest little elf boots on a gnome that you'll ever see <laughs> um yeah so this one's a little more christmasy than the last one with uh red and green um but yeah He's adorable and he's finished, which is good. So I'm taking November off of gnome knitting so that if Imagine Landscapes has another gnome knit along this December, I won't be gnomed out, right? Which I think they do have another Advent knit along this year. But I'm not going to make that promise for them because I really haven't looked it up. I'm assuming, but I have not fact-checked that, so don't trust what I'm saying. So I have obviously gotten quite a bit of knitting done. I've got a sweater, a pair of socks, a couple of decorations, a um, headband. Uh, but I also did some sewing, got some sewing projects done. They're really little. But um, I did, I have been rearranging this craft room so much, just trying to find a good layout to my flow, especially for sewing. Like my knitting and my spinning, I usually do in the living room while we're watching TV. So I don't really need my craft room set up for those things, but I do need it set up for my sewing. And it's taken me... I don't know how many times I've rearranged this room. It's been a lot. Um, it's taken me a lot of rearrangements to finally find a layout that works for me. And I'll put in uh, a video or picture or something of this so you can see, but um, 
I made some masks. <laughs> They're really little projects, but um, we have to wear masks when we go to work. Um, Michael and I both teach, uh, and we'll be going back to teaching all five days a week starting in January. So we need more masks. <laughs> so um, I've been, you know, like I said, messing around with my craft room, trying to get my sewing mojo back, getting the flow back. And so I've been making masks. Now, I did make some masks before, but I neglected to pre-shrink the fabric. So they have shrunk since washing and don't fit very well anymore. So this time I pre-shrunk the fabric. Go figure, uh, that's a thing you should do. So <laughs> I've got um, kind of a, like a holiday themed one, if you will, or like Northern Cabin in the Woods kind of thing with the trees. And then I have Mario themed fabric here, which I have a uh, sweater size knitting bag of mine over there. It actually has a sweater project in it. I haven't touched it in a year. Um, <laughs> so I have a, a Mario themed one. And then these two are Star Wars. And actually look at, they're like exactly the same because they came from the same fat quarter fabric and it just worked out that they were cut the same. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the pattern is uh, free on the internet. I will link it down below in the description box. Um, but I just googled free um, face mask pattern pleated. I went with the pleated. And so I have um, at the top, I have pipe cleaner up here to form fit the nose. We've got elastic bands sewn in. This is double-sided with fabric, so it is a double layer mask. Um, on the inside, the pattern does let you have an insert here for a filter. We are not using filter inserts. We just use the double-sided mask and it works fine. So I did sew that hole closed. Um, but yeah, it just, oh, okay. Let's see if I can do this. You know, elastic around the ears. They are a little on the big side for me. Um, but it works because the other mask patterns I have made that are more form fitting to the face, um, they move too much while we're talking. And so this is not dependent on my chin in order to stay on, which means I can be lecturing up at the front of the classroom and my mask isn't moving the whole time, which is really good. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no idea if you could hear me through my mask. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got those. And I made another one too. It, kind of goes along with the the Christmas tree one. It has um, black bears on it. Um, Michael wore that to the store today, so that's out in the car right now. But <laughs> but yeah, so we've got four, five more masks now in our stash. And so we just, um, excuse me, we wear a mask a day. Um, we're only with students two or three hours a day. Um, and then it comes home and goes in the laundry bin and then we get a new mask the next day. So, um, yeah, it's just buying the disposable masks is, um, they're kind of pricey. They're also uncomfortable, <laughs> I find, depending on the brand. And we're trying to pay attention to how much stuff we throw away. Um, it's something we're being really conscious about with our choices, um, Michael and I. And so um, every chance we get to help reduce the amount of waste we're producing is something we want to try to do. So things like um, the masks are a big thing. Um, like, like we'll wear the surgical ones if we feel like we need to. Like if I'm going to be on an airplane for 
several hours. You know, instead of wearing cloth one, I'll wear a surgical mask. Um, you know, things like that. But just going into the grocery store for 30 minutes to pick up groceries, I, I just want to wear a fabric one. Um, so we're trying to be conscious of, of things like that. But anyway, so I made a few more masks and I'm really liking the layout of my craft room now so I can get some sewing done, which is something I've wanted to do for a while. So I'm really excited about that. So that wraps up my finished objects. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot to me, but it's been a really busy month, which again, I'll talk about in a little bit. But I do have some works in progress, things that I didn't quite finish this month that I plan to wrap up next month. And one of those is a spinning project. So um, I'm keeping the fiber in one of my clear vinyl bags. Um, it's got this like canvas-like cloth on the outside here. It's lined with this vinyl, clear vinyl, um, all through the inside of the bag. So uh, this clear vinyl just goes all the way through, which means it's good for um, not just spinning projects and knitting projects, but also things like um, paint or makeup or things that might spill. Um, I also use this bag to take to a baseball game because you're only allowed to bring in clear bags to uh, baseball games and they let me bring this one in so <laughs> I think I need to make a few more. Uh, but yeah this is the uh, fiber I have left to spin up. Oh my gosh, I love natural sunlight. It just shows these colors so um, so well and so true on the camera. It looks the same in person as what I'm seeing on screen, which is great. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is less than half because I have some stuff on the bobbin. But this is from Wild Wool Farms. This is my little handwritten label for this fiber. Um, this is on her Panda base, which is 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, and 10% nylon. There. Um, and I spun up half of it already. Um, so I'll show you. This is... No, because some of this is still on the bobbin on the spinning wheel, and I really just don't want to take it off there. But yes, I'm spinning from this half right now. Um, here is the other half <laughs> that I did already finish. So it's basically blues and browns. This is the braid I bought with my husband in mind, and I really want to net him socks out of this. Because um, it's got that merino, it's got that nylon, it's got the bamboo. I think it's going to work really well for that. So I have a two-ply yarn here. Uh, and I just love how the colors worked out where it pretty much, one bobbin was spun up where it was like brown the first half and blue the second half. And then the other bobbin was the opposite, blue the first half, brown the second half. And so it's pretty much blue plied with brown all the way through with all these various shades. I mean, there are some parts where brown got plied with brown and blue got plied with blue. You know what I'm saying, but <laughs> I am so in love with this, uh, with this yarn. So I have not done um uh i have not used the wraps per inch tool yet on this uh yarn but i did did i write down i think i put it on my instagram um how many yards are in this uh and how much it weighs and based on that um I, I also did some calculations for the grist. So based on all of that, this is a fingering weight yarn, but I did not put it on the wraps per inch tool to check it that way as well. But yeah, so I'm pretty excited. So this is uh, half of the fiber 
Um, I do have one ply of the second half finish, so you can see it was blue first and then brown second. And then the other bobbin is on the spinning wheel, so brown is going on first and then blue. So I'm spinning this from the outside here. We'll go through the brown and then into the blue. Uh, yeah, I mean, what? I'm really happy with this project. So I have, um, so I have the finished yarn and the fiber I still have to spin. Uh, plus I'm keeping the tag in here with it so I can remember what this is. And this bobbin is finished. Um, so this is also going in here. So I can just keep all of this project together. Um, the other bobbin is on the wheel, right? <laughs> uh, but everything that's off the wheel is living in this bag so I can keep track of what is what. Not that I have multiple spinning projects going on, but I do have lots of fiber around that I've been playing with. So at least this way it doesn't get lost in with the other fiber. So yeah, my plan is to finish spinning this and then knit socks out of it. So, so my last work in progress is another pair of socks and I cast on this yarn. Uh, it is a new to me yarn here. Uh, this is Lion Brand Summer Nights, which is 82% acrylic and 18% polyester. Um, it is a fingering weight yarn and the colorway is Treasure Island, um, but it's all man-made fibers, no natural fibers. So I thought um, it was a reasonable price. Um, it's a yarn I haven't tried before, so I brought it home, put it in my stash. So I cast this on. Uh, I'm making socks for myself because I want to see what these socks feel like, how long they last, um, that kind of thing. So uh, I do have one sock finished. The other sock is still on the needles. <laughs> um, so I'm knitting them my usual way, which is one at a time, magic loop cuff down <laughs> uh, and I went with some um, somewhat shorty socks this time. So I have one by one rib at the top. I did that for 20 rounds and then right away I started the heel flap and then I went with three by one rib down the sock. So one thing I am noticing is, well, first of all, the sparkle that's in this yarn. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Maybe a little bit you can see it. Um, this, I, I don't use sparkle yarn a lot. I think I've only ever used it a handful of times, um, but I think it looks really neat. <laughs> um, but the other thing I've noticed is that with this yarn, this this pattern, even though it's super simple, it's just ribbing one by one rib, three by one rib. It's just not standing out. So the first thing I'm noticing about this yarn is that the pattern doesn't pop the same way it does on a wool nylon blend. Um, so yeah, it's just, I, I know there's, you know, color variation going on, but it's just, it doesn't have that stitch definition that I find really appealing in most wool or wool blend sock yarns. So that's the first thing I noticed. Now, if I turn this inside out, let me just keep the sock off the blocker. If I turn it inside out and you look at that three by one rib pattern. There we go. You can see this is a purl stitch on the right side, so it's a knit stitch on the uh, wrong side. You can see that stick out. 
and it does look very nice in person. Um, so <laughs> there was a thought I had in my mind of like, we could wear these inside out. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can see it. It's just, like I said, I'm comparing it to what I have used and what I have used are wool sock yarns or a wool blend sock yarn, but primarily wool. So comparing it to that already, it um, the stitch def definition is not the same. I would place a wool sock yarn above the acrylic polyester blend. Um, knitting it was um, not bad. <laughs> it's not squeaky, um, but it does feel different. It doesn't have as much stretch to it as a natural fiber. Um, and I can definitely feel that while I'm knitting with it. So I feel like I do have to pay attention to my tension when I'm knitting with this yarn. Like if I don't pay attention, it's probably going to show. Um, so that is something um, I'm keeping in mind as well. But otherwise, I think all in all, it, it looks very nice. I like the color. Um, I like the feel of it. If it, it feels nice, the fabric. Um, so then when I finish these socks, I want to pay attention to how well do they wear. So, um, does the ribbing hold up throughout the day? What about when I wash the sock? Does that change it? Um, do the fibers last? You know, am I going to get holes in my sock in two weeks or is it going to hold up over time? So, um, yeah, I'm going to be looking for those things because I don't want to knit, a pair of socks for a family member or a friend knowing that the fabric just doesn't hold up. So that's something I want to test out with this new yarn. So I do have a couple things planned, my work's in progress, that I do want to finish up next month, but I do have a couple of other things. Actually, one of them is a whip. Let me, maybe I should talk about that one first. So in my Mario sweater size bag is a sweater that I started last year. Um, yeah, so I haven't opened up this bag in a really long time. So inside here is a color work sweater that I started, was it before the pandemic or right at the start of it? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, this is uh, dark water. Uh, color work sweater that I started a year ago, more than a year ago, because it was in spring of 2020, I think. I think it was at the start of the pandemic, to be honest. And by the start of pa the pandemic, I mean March 2020, when um, the first COVID cases were right here in Washington State, which is where I am, um, not too far from where I work. <laughs> um, anyway, so I want to, uh, probably not this month, but in December, I want to pick this thing back up again. Okay. Now, if I do it this next month in November, that would be amazing, but I'm not going to put pressure on myself because I have other stuff going on. Um, but yeah, I'm knitting this out of Cloudborn Highland Fingering. I've got Gray Heather and Stormy Skies. So it's 100% fine Highland wool. Um, it feels amazing. I <laughs> love the pattern. I love the color. I mean, just look at this blue with my complexion. Like, this is made for me. So I just need to pick this back up again, but yeah, it's been sitting in this project bag, just waiting for me to pick it up again. Uh, the pattern is not in this bag. I think I was doing it off of my tablet, so I'm gonna have to figure out where I left off and that whole thing, which could be a headache. 
but I need to do it because this is an awesome sweater and I still really want it in my wardrobe. So that is on the to-do list for this year. Maybe not this upcoming month, but at least by the end of the year. <sighs> but before I remembered that sweater, I planned out another one. So I have um, yarn set aside in this bag um, for a sweater I'd like to try. Uh, I need to do a swatch with this yarn to see if I like the choices. So um, I have Knit Picks palette in mist, oops, and ash. And then I have this silk fiber that has this beautiful, like, bluish gray tint to it. <laughs> I'm loving the bluey grays kind of thing, obviously, is what's happening. So I want to do a knit a swatch. I think these colors are going to go really well together in the fibers, but I need to test it. Because just because I think it's going to work out doesn't mean it will. So I need to do a swatch. Um, but the pattern I'm thinking of is... Like, it kind of looks like a Chanel jacket. Um, and I'll have this pattern linked down below in the description box as well. Uh, I have not knit this pattern yet. I did purchase it. Um... But I'm going to do a swatch first to see what the fabric looks like, see if I need to switch up my yarn choices. I don't know. We'll see. Change the gauge. I don't know. Um, and then go from there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that would look really nice in my wardrobe. It would be something polished and professional that I could wear at work. Um, and I, I want more of those things. I like wearing my hand knits to work. Um, but, uh, you know, I can't dress casual every day. I can't just wear the weekender with yoga pants to work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think this jacket would, would be a really nice addition to my wardrobe. So I'm trying to think of what could I use in my wardrobe and kind of back map from there my yarn choices and pattern choices and things. So if I keep the end goal in mind and work toward it, something new I'm trying instead of just knitting what I feel like when I feel like. We'll give it a shot. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> so this month coming up, November, is going to be the busiest month of the school year for me because it's the last month of my tenure process or hopefully the last month of my tenure process <laughs> um yeah right before thanksgiving um thanksgiving is uh that what last thursday of november uh in the united states uh so Right before I go on Thanksgiving holiday, I have to have all of my documents turned in. So I have been doing a lot of writing, a lot of meeting with colleagues, uh, students, collecting feedback, um, making improvements throughout these first two to three years, um, and just growing as an instructor. And my last packet of documents is due this upcoming month. So uh, that is going to have to be the focus of my attention <laughs> because it's really important. So uh, I had a goal to publish uh, another pattern this month. That did not happen. I super apologize. I wanted to get that up. But I, again... Teaching is my day job. It's the thing that pays my bills. It's one of my great passions. And turning in these documents is a huge milestone in my journey. So that has been hogging my attention, which it needs to. Um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, this upcoming month, I expect my projects to kind of fall to the back burner, maybe not finish so many things this month. 
Um, yeah, we'll see. So my position moving into November is I make no promises. <laughs> Uh, because my focus has to be on my turning in my big packet of documents at the end. So that's what I'm going to be focused on. Uh, that's what I have been focused on this month as well. Uh, even though I've gotten a lot done, I, I kind of need to dial that back and use my some of my creative juices in, in my writing instead of in my crafting. <laughs> Uh, and just channel the, that energy this month. So uh, that's what's going on with eating my attention. Everything is great here. Um, we're really loving, excuse me, being back in the classroom, seeing students a few times a week. Um, it's been great for my morale. I think it's been great for their morale. We, it, we've been able to make connections, chit chat with each other, things that we've been missing this past year and a half. Being able to actually, you know, ask someone a question without being recorded on an online meeting. Um, wow, what a difference that makes in folks' willingness to ask questions. Yeah, it's affected me too. Um, but yeah, so it's been really great to be back in the classroom, even though we have to wear masks, which when this much of your face is covered up, it's still difficult to see people's reactions to new material. Like, do they seem confused? Do they seem like this makes sense? You know, I read a lot of faces as most instructors do. <laughs> it's, so I'm still missing some of that, but I've gained back so many more things than just being able to see their whole face. Um, so yeah, that's been really great. Uh, it's lifted my spirits. Uh, things are good. Uh, everyone's staying healthy. You know, we're distancing when we can. Everyone's washing their hands, staying home when they're sick. Um, and we've had no issues so far. <laughs> Not <come on. laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I, I'm really happy with this transition um, so far, and I hope that we continue to transition back into offering classes full-time on campus again. I know I'm missing it, and I know a lot of the students are as well, so exciting times. Anyway, so it's time to announce the giveaway. I've rambled on enough about all the things going on. <laughs> so, uh, so this giveaway is going to run from the time this video is posted on YouTube, which will either be today, October 31st, or tomorrow, November 1st, <laughs> uh, until November 15th. So you get two weeks for this giveaway to enter. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is number one, be a subscriber of this channel, and number two, comment down below to the prompt, which I'm going to tell you momentarily. Before I get to the prompt, I'm going to tell you what you can win for this giveaway. So what you're going to get from me this month are two face masks out of this pleated pattern. Um, but uh, depending on who wins, so what I'll do is choose the winner and that person will get to choose um, some fabric from my stash um, to determine what pattern is on the mask and I will sew up two of them for you. Um, so two face masks and a mini skein of yarn that I dyed up. So this is a super bright, colorful, happy mini skein of yarn. Um, Advent projects are coming up, Advent calendars and things. Uh, lots of patterns uh, focused around mini skeins. And who doesn't want one more mini skein in their stash? <laughs> so it's super bright and colorful. Happy reminds me of holiday lights, ornaments, um, fun, bright, colorful packaging on um, presents. Um, just kind of makes me makes me happy. It gets me excited about the holidays. Um, so yes, you will win two face 
face masks. Again, the winner will get to choose the fabric uh, and a mini skein of yarn. So here is the prompt for the giveaway. The focus is on sweaters. Um, it's sweater weather in the United States. It's cool. It's chilly, at least where I am in the Pacific Northwest. Winter is upon us and I'm really interested in making more sweaters. So what I'm curious about are your sweater recommendations. So this could be a pattern you have knit before. This could be one that you would like to knit. Heck, this could be one that you have no interest in knitting for yourself, but if someone were to offer to knit it for you, you would gladly take it. Um, so what are your sweater recommendations of patterns that you have knit, you would knit, or just the finished object looks so amazing, you would love to have it, but maybe not make it yourself. <laughs> Um, so I'd love to hear your recommendations down below in the comments. Um, if you can link to where you find this pattern even better so that not only I can find the pattern easily, but anyone else checking out the comments on this video could click the link and find your sweater pattern recommendations. So let's fill the comments with sweater pattern recommendations. It can be knitting, crocheting, sewing. I've never sewn a sweater, but it's something I'd be willing to try. Um, weaving a sweater, also something I've never done, but I would be interested in trying. So you're not limited to knitting patterns. Feel free to post patterns for any craft for a sweater. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to do. Be a subscriber, comment down below with your sweater recommendations, and I will announce the winner of the giveaway on the channel on November 15th. So you have between now and then to enter. All right, everyone, that's all I have. <laughs> I hope you take care. Have a great um, couple of weeks until I see you again for the uh, giveaway announcement. So... Yeah, until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye.